Let me go straight across to Dr. Shashi Tharoor, uh, who's just won a contest in Thiruvananthapuram against a sitting union minister. Mr. Tharoor, you're back in Delhi smiling, but can I ask you what you make of uh, uh, the day's happenings in Delhi? As it were, the India Alliance has just announced that they are going to be sitting in the opposition, uh, and the NDA is in firm position, is in the driver's seat to form the government. Yes, well, that's, that is happening, but don't forget that he is now dependent on allies to pass anything, pass his budget, pass a law, initiate a major new policy, and that's certainly going to moderate the nature of his government. Uh, he has 240, um, I think, altogether, and he's facing uh, uh, a formidable opposition in the India Alliance with 234. So unless he's able to keep his allies on side, he's not going to be able to go very far. Don't forget, Shreya, this is a prime minister who was able to impose demonetization without even consulting his cabinet, let alone his finance minister, who was able to impose the most stringent COVID lockdown in the world without consulting anybody, not even the chief ministers who had to implement it. They've had a style of governance which was my way or the highway. And that's no longer going to be possible. So this is going to be good for the country that we have a government which, however well it's doing right now mm -hmm. to stitch together enough to form a government, will mm -hmm. nonetheless have to take other people's views into account. And not everybody within the alliance may agree with everything they want to do. They're going to have to work with them. They're going to have to work with us in the, in the um, opposition as well to get things through parliament. So I think it will be healthy for Indian democracy to see a different version uh, of this government uh, in office. You and many other Congress leaders are raising, uh, you know, raising this doubt that given the nature of Mr. Nitish Kumar and Chandra Babu Naidu, uh, this government may not ve last very lo long. Is that what you're saying? All we're reminding you is that both of them have left the NDA in the past and done so with some very harsh language. Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu's party moved a no confidence motion in the Lok Sabha when I was there, and we participated in that debate, so we know how angry they were about their experience as a coalition partner, Mr. Modi's. And Mr. Nitish Kumar, as you know, has left NDA twice. So mm. a third time is not impossible, right? Uh, mm. All I can say is that good luck to them. But uh, the BJP will have their hands full and lean, knowing how to deal with allies uh, who will have their own exigencies and their own exigent demands. Uh, mm. it'll, be, it'll be enjoyable to watch, I think, for all followers of Indian democracy. I'm not a, I'm not negative on coalition governments. I think India has done very well under coalition governments. And from 1991 to 2011, uh, we had the 20 best years of our economic growth, and those were all with minority or, or coalition governments. So nothing wrong with that, but you have to behave differently. You can't behave in the kind of high-handed manner that this government has been used to behaving. So if they take people along, they work conciliatory and accommodative uh, fashion with the opposition and with their own allies, we might actually get the country progressing in a pleasant way, rather than in some of the, uh, frankly, inflammatory and, and offensive and oppressive manner in which we've seen this government functioning in the past. Mr. Tharoor, of course, you have uh, won your seat. The India Alliance has swept the election in Kerala. Uh, but what do you make of Suresh Gopi opening the account for the BJP? Were you expecting it? Well, first of all, I wasn't expecting it. I don't think anybody was. But having looked at, the, at, at, at his campaign, I was too busy focusing on my own. But having now looked at it, Suresh Gopi is a friend of mine. I've known him for many years. And he is not a flame-throwing BJP communist. Uh, he ran a campaign where he explicitly reached out to the minorities and presented himself as a secular candidate. He also has a personal image as a celebrity, a big movie star, a very popular one, and as the host of the Malayalam edition of Kaun Banega Krorpati. This is somebody who has entered into a people's homes, as it were, and their hearts. And he was able to leverage that appeal. That's not available to many other candidates of the BJP. And certainly, there were two other factors that helped uh, the BJP, uh, the two candidates who did well, that is he and my opponent who came second, uh, both benefited from two things that were not true later in the campaign. In the second phase, which is when Kerala voted, the campaign had not taken that inflammatory tone that it took later on when Mr. Modi and, and Mr. Shah realized how badly it was going for them and started uh, really saying horrific things about our minorities, about Muslims and so on, and everything from Mangal Sutras to Mujras were flung at the opposition. That hadn't happened yet. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, the BJP didn't constantly remind voters every day of how nasty they were to minorities. Remember, Kerala 
so-called minorities account for 47 percent of the population. And that would have hurt them uh, had this had this messaging continued. Uh, but by the second phase, it hadn't happened. And the other thing is, by the second phase, uh, the aura of inevitability and invincibility in which the BJP had garbed itself had not yet faded. Uh, as Mr. Modi became more and more desperate, it became more and more clear that they were not going to do as well as they had assumed they were going to do. They stopped saying char so par. They stopped even talking about 300. It was a very different uh, pitch in BJP. <laughs> All I can say is that in Kerala, we still had the version of the BJP that was able to say to voters, vote for our guy, you'll get a minister, he'll deliver so much for you, vote for your opponent, you're going to get an opposition leader. And that people still were taken in by, certainly in the state capital, that was a strong part of my opponent's appeal. So all of those things would have had less potency had Kerala voted in a later phase. But in the second phase, uh, this was not an issue. And I think when we analyze clearly what happened, uh, I don't see this as a harbinger of a dramatic BJP rise in Kerala. But I do understand the serious work to be done by the secular parties to ensure that we keep everyone on the on the straight path.